Now, I was really moved by a YouTube video that I saw a couple of weeks ago from a great bloke called Calvin Robinson. He is part of the Anglican Church in the United Kingdom. We spoke to him uh, while we were there, of course, after the passing of Queen Elizabeth. But he has a show on GB News, and on GB News he spoke about the persecution of Christians. Now, you know that I'm not a person of faith, but I have deep respect for people of faith. And let's now talk about the persecution that is actually happening of Christians in the West but also around the world. And the great man joins us now from the UK. Calvin, I was deeply moved by your, uh, by your speech. I'll repost it on our Facebook page. But let's be really clear. What is happening to Christians around the world right now? Christianity is the most persecuted religion all around the world. Christians are being tortured, killed, executed, arrested for no crime at all, just for having the Christian faith. And we're seeing this everywhere we look, but most especially in Islamic countries. Since the West handed Afghanistan back to the Taliban, that has become the number one place in the world for Christians to be persecuted. But what's worse than this is that it, we're not just being persecuted around the world. Intolerance is growing in the West too. In the United Kingdom, in Australia, in America, tolerance of Christianity has no, taken a nosedive. It has become socially acceptable to criticize, persecute, to be hostile towards Christians in a, in a way that they, people would never dream of doing to any other faith. Hinduism, Sikhism, Islam, Judaism are all protected for, the, for a very good reason. However, Christianity is seen as, well, it's one of ours, so we can punch down. However, it's no longer punching down. In countries like the United Kingdom, it's no longer the predominant religion. Islam and atheism is taking over as of the last census of last year. This is the problem. People think, okay, we can self-flagellate because this is a Christian nation. Well, in what sense is it? And if you keep punching so-called downed Christians, eventually there will be none left. What we need to do as Christians is stand up and say, actually, we believe in our faith too. We need protection under the law too. And in fact, we have it, but we need it to be upheld. And it's not appropriate. Okay, mock us, fine, but mock everyone equally. Well, and that's the point. That is exactly the point, right? Which is because we know that the reaction of mainstream Christianity is nowhere near the violence that is perpetrated in reaction of other um, extremist versions of, of faith, basically you yeah. can mock away. You can say what you want on television. But to that point that you just said, right, and this is just a lightning chat, we'll get into a deeper one a little further down the track, but institutions and laws exist to make sure that people are not persecuted on their faith. It would be upheld in almost every other example bar Christianity. Yeah, it's, it's the exact same way around when it comes to racism. All of these things are actually upheld in a woke stance. So if, um, for example, someone is being racist towards a white person in this country, nothing will happen. It will be seen as OK. But if you flip it around and someone's racist to a black person in this country, they will face persecution. And then you can split that apart even further and say, if a black person is being um, abused racially because they are right wing, no problem. But if they're being abused racially because they're left-wing, yes, let's clamp down. So it gets even into the politics of, of the person's skin colour at this point. And we're seeing the same with religion. Um, I had some well-known authors and well-known Nigerian princesses attacking me because of my religious garb that I tend to wear on a Sunday. Uh, typical, traditional Anglican religious garb. Didn't go out of my way to put it on. It's what I wear in church. And sometimes when I go from church to TV, I'm still wearing it. However, these authors and this Nigerian princess and other people were attacking me for it. And I thought, that's interesting because I, I don't think I would see them attack an Orthodox Jew for wearing his traditional robes. I don't think I'd see them attacking an imam for wearing their traditional robes either. And my, my whole point is, okay, well, if you're going to mock Christianity, then do Islam too. But of course, they never would dare, would they? And that yeah. is the fundamental it's double standards. Yeah, what a surprise. Calvin, awesome to talk to you. Thank you very much for the conversation.